What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I'm gonna be showing you how to change over your front brake pads, rotors, and also the wheel bearings on the RC Colorado, Rodeo, or the D-Max. Okay, so first up, while the vehicle is still on the ground, loosen the wheel nuts and just loosen or remove the six allen key bolts from the hub. I just removed the allen key bolts completely. Next, jack the vehicle up and place jack stands in a safe place underneath the vehicle. Now remove the remaining wheel nuts and the wheel and place it underneath the vehicle like so. Pull the dust cover off and remove the circlet with a pair of circlet pliers, the metal ring, and slide the hub plate off the axle. Just get rid of the excess grease to reveal the two locking rings. There will be three screws holding the outer locking ring in place. Mine only has two for some reason, but remove the three screws and pull the locking ring off. Now simply remove the inner locking ring like so and remove that too. That is threaded on so just be careful. This is the locking ring that sets the tension for the wheel bearings. Now we will undo the bolts that hold the hub to the rotor. Use a large screwdriver or something even a little more heavy duty. Place it inside the end of the rotor just like so and against the wheel. You can now loosen off the bolts. Once all the bolts have been loosened, remove the screwdriver. Now onto the caliper. We need to remove the bolts that hold the caliper in place. There is one at the bottom and one at the top. Undo these bolts, remove the caliper, and rest the caliper on the tire so not to put strain on the brake line. Now let's remove the hub and the rotor from the spindle. Grab your Ryobi rattle gun and remove the bolts holding the rotor to the hub. Now we need to separate the hub from the rotor. You can see where it separates right where I'm holding this tool. I decided to use this tool that I had made when I was uh, boiler making, which worked really well on the other side. But this side, not so much. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Well, that kind of sucked because that worked beautifully uh, for me on the other side, actually. Um, now I've got to figure out another way to do it. As I said before, most people will probably just use a, uh, a pry bar or if you've got access to uh, a press, that could actually press that out. Um, my tools are very limited here. So now I have to try and figure out how to get the rotor off of the hub and I did, quite easily actually. I simply used two hammers, like so, to kind of punch the hub out. I just wouldn't recommend hitting it maybe as hard as I did. I just wish I went a little bit softer. Now give all these other parts a good clean down. I use brake cleaner and also degreaser. Using a seal puller, remove the seal on the back of the hub. Then you can remove the inner wheel bearing. Clean out the hub of all the old grease. Now we need to remove the old racers. You can see the little notch on the inside of the hub. There is another on the other side. Lay the hub down and grab a flat roll pin punch and tap the race out evenly. Do this for both the inner and outer races. Give the hub another clean because the new races need to be installed on a dry, clean metal surface. 
This step isn't necessary, but if you can, grab a wire wheel on a drill or a die grinder and give the hub seating surface a good clean up for rust and scaly metal or dirt. Unbox and unwrap your new bearings. Separate the race and the bearings and then put the bearings back into the box for now and clean the race from any protective oil. Position the inner race on the hub and gently tap applying balancing pressure with your other hand to reinstall the race. Then use a piece of wood to tap it down evenly. Grab your punch again and lightly tap the top of the race all the way around evenly like so until it is seated inside the hub. And also do the same for the outer race as well. Okay, let's pack the wheel bearings with some grease. Grab yourself some high temperature wheel bearing grease, such as the Penrite option I've just shown. Scoop a heap out and lay it into the palm of your hand. With your other hand, hold the wheel bearing like so and press the bearing into the grease on the palm of your hand. Here in this freeze frame, you can see the grease packed between the bearing rings and the rollers. Now just keep working your way around the bearing on both the top side and the bottom side until it is fully packed. Smear some grease on the inside and outside of the bearing and onto the race. Seat the bearing into the race and install the new inner hub seal. Flip the hub over, grease the outer race and also the spindle. Now we can install the new rotors. Clean them up with some brake cleaner and a clean rag. Seat the hub inside the rotor and bolt it back down. Reinstall the ABS ring onto the back of the hub just as it was. Slide your new rotor and hub back onto the spindle Install the new outer bearing and tighten up the locking ring. You don't want to do this up too tightly, just enough to have no play, but not too tight so the bearings actually have preload. The hub should still spin fairly freely, just like so. Now reinstall the outer locking ring and all three screws. Using the same method we used to loosen the rotor to hub bolts, Retighten them or torque them to spec if you know the specifications. Clean both the hub plate and the dust cap, ensuring a clean metal surface. Smear some gasket maker onto the hub and the hub plate. Then reinstall the hub plate, the metal ring, the circlip, and then the dust cap. Insert the Allen key bolts and then tighten them up. Now onto fitting the new brake pads. Remove the outer brake pad only. Get yourself a clamp and tighten up like so. You need to press the caliper pistons back into their cylinders to fit the new brake pads properly. I always reuse the old inner brake pad to press against the pistons to not cause any damage. Remove the inner brake pad and give the caliper a clean with some brake cleaner and wipe over. Grab the new brake pad that has the metal tab on it and insert it against the pistons just like so. This can be quite fiddly, so take your time and be patient. Place the other pad into the other side. Now simply reinstall the whole caliper assembly and brake pads back onto the rotor and tighten the caliper bolts. Now reinstall the wheel, the wheel nuts, Lower the car back down to the ground and tighten the wheel nuts and allen key bolts on the hub properly. Well, there you have it everybody. That is how you change over the front uh, brake pads, rotors and the wheel bearings. It's been a little bit of a mission of a day. Uh, I'm not too sure if you noticed in the film earlier. Um, I forgot to put the little, little ABS ring on the back of the uh, rotor. It's very important that you do put that on. 
I forgot to do it, I had to pull it all apart again, put it back on, make sure that I put it in the film, the video, and then put it all back together again. So, a little mistake that I made there, but all in all, it's all back together. It's all been uh, put together really well now. And all I gotta do now is go bed in the new brake pads against the rotors. There's all sorts of theories about how you do it. It'll be all over the internet. Uh, me personally, I sort of just drive along at around about 30 kilometers an hour, light brake, 30 kilometers an hour, light brake. I move up to 60 kilometers an hour. I go to a medium to sort of hard brake. I'll do that a couple of times, go to 80, and then do a, do another medium to hard brake as well. Try and bed those pads in, but I'll let you do your own research on that one. See what you think uh, as to what would be the best method for you or what you feel most comfortable with. But otherwise, that's it. That's how you do it. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video.